Well, many General Motors fans are aware of the Chevrolet small block as well as the various small blocks and big blocks that many of GM divisions produced over the years. But one series of engines that is often not talked about and in some cases not even known are the engines produced by GMC from 1959 to 1974. More specifically, during this period, GMC produced a number of 60-degree V6, V8, and V12 engines. On the gas side, there were a number of displacements. As an example, the V6s ranged from 305 cubic inches up to 478 cubic inches and included a 305, 351, 379, 401, 432, and 478 cubic inch V6. There was also a 637 cubic inch, 60 degree V8 that was based on the same design and employed the same tooling as the V6. And there was a 702 cubic inch so-called twin six that GMC introduced that had its own block, but it did use two cylinder heads per side, as well as valve covers and exhaust manifolds, and was just an absolute monster that was found under hood in medium and heavy duty trucks. These engines were generally well built, very reliable, durable, and I think in the end they just kind of succumbed to the fact that they were costly to produce, and there were other alternatives that were available by the time 1974 rolled around, and also on the gas side, these engines were not overly efficient from a fuel standpoint. You can imagine a 702 cubic inch gas engine is not going to deliver great fuel economy no matter what it is in. However, even though these engines are rarely talked about, there are even more rare engines that most people don't even know of. More specifically, that GMC actually made diesel versions of these engines, or at least some of them. More specifically, the 351 cubic inch V6, 478 cubic inch V6, and 637 cubic inch V8 all had diesel variants. These are four-stroke diesel variants, not the typical two-stroke Detroit diesel engines that were made by General Motors during this time. And they were not necessarily dieselized gas engines. They were just designed at the same time, and they were designed to employ similar tooling as the gas engines, but they definitely had different internals. In any case, the 351, 478, and 637 cubic inch diesels were known often as the Toro Flow diesels produced by GMC. Although there was some nomenclature differences over the years, GMC was pretty consistent in calling them Toro Flow. In some cases, if they appeared under hood in a Chevrolet vehicle, they were called Torque Flow. I don't know if that was intended or unintentional and just a misprint, but some of the brochures from Chevrolet did indeed call them Torque Flow. These Toro Flow diesels initially debuted for 1964, so several years after the V6 gas engines did. And it originally came out in just two displacements, both V6s, a 351 cubic inch engine and a 478 cubic inch engine. The 351 cubic inch diesel made 130 horsepower, wow, and the 478 cubic inch diesel made 150 horsepower. There was also a high output 478 cubic inch Toro Flow diesel that made 170 horsepower. There was really never any engine that was part of the Toro Flow lineup that was smaller than the 351, despite the fact that GMC obviously produced some smaller gas V6 engines like the 305 cubic inch V6. Shortly after the introduction of the two V6 diesels in 1966, a 637 cubic inch Toro Flow V8 debuted, and it was initially rated at 195 horsepower, but a high output version was rated at 220 horsepower. As the years went on, GMC did make refinements to the Toro Flow diesel. In fact, for 1969, it rebranded them the Toro Flow 2 diesel series. I guess that would be a play that General Motors would later use on the Chevrolet Citation when it would call it the Citation 2 in its final model years. And I suspect that this is in part because the Toro Flow diesels were somewhat imperfect engines. They were more reliable, I would say, than the Olds 350 diesels, another four-stroke diesel engine that would be somewhat based on the Oldsmobile 350 gas engine, but also had a number of issues during its time 
that it was placed in passenger vehicles. More specifically, these Toro flows often suffered injection pump issues, and in some cases they did have head gasket issues, although here there were six head bolts per cylinder clamping down on the heads, whereas there were less than that on the Oldsmobile diesels. Nonetheless, the Toro flow didn't necessarily earn the best reputation, although it was never designed to be a heavy-duty diesel. It was effectively designed to be kind of a medium-duty diesel engine, that really enabled operators to conserve fuel. And in fact, the Toro Flow was successful in that regard. Many owners reported that the fuel consumption of the Toro Flow diesels was about half that of the similarly sized gas engines. And so they were cheaper to run. And they did have some interesting, well, let's say quirks about them. I mentioned that the injection pump was an issue on the Toro Flows, but one of the things I didn't mention is that, remember that these engines had a very narrow V. I shouldn't say very narrow, but a narrow V, 60 degrees, as opposed to 90 degrees is an example that most V8 engines had. And as a consequence, the injection pump was packaged in the middle of the V, and therefore there was really no room for the intake manifold to be there. As a consequence, the intake manifolds for the Toro Flow diesel are on the outside of the cylinder heads on the same side as the exhaust ports. So take a look here and you can see actually the intakes on either side of the exterior of the cylinder heads. And there they are right next to the exhaust ports. So kind of a funky design, but I suppose there really weren't many alternatives given that the injection pump had to be packaged somewhere. Similar to the gas engines, these Toro Flow diesels were over square designs with a bore was significantly greater than the stroke. As an example, the 351 cubic inch Toro Flow had a bore of 4.56 inches and a stroke of 3.56 inches. All of the other Toro Flow diesels, including the 637 cubic inch V8 and the 478 cubic inch V6, had a 5.125 inch bore and a 3.86 inch stroke, a very short stroke. And the thought there was that with a short stroke, the pistons were basically moving less and so the engine would have greater longevity. Not a bad idea, but again, the engines did suffer from some of the issues that I previously mentioned. All of these engines, the Toro Flows, did have balance shafts, irrespective of whether or not they were V6s or V8s. And they also had an interesting design, which was typical for the diesels of the time, in that the combustion chamber was really formed by the top of the piston and not by the cylinder head. You can see in this cutaway that the piston has little cutouts in it, I guess you would call them, and that's where the fuel would be injected at the precise moment and would kind of swirl around in that combustion chamber created by the sandwich area between the piston and the cylinder head, and then it would self-ignite and the diesel would power its way to, well, not that much horsepower, but at least some horsepower. As the years went on, GM did end up making refinements to the Toro Flow diesel, and the latter models were actually relatively reliable. These engines also found their way into a number of marine applications where they actually, again, had similar success, often because the marine applications were, let's say, lighter duty than, in some cases, what operators were putting these engines through in the medium-duty trucks, and in some cases, well... People were using them as effectively heavy-duty trucks to pull heavier-duty loads, and the Toro Flow did not respond well to that. The last year for the Toro Flow diesels was 1974, and they rode off into the sunset. At the time, then, customers would just have to choose from a different engine, or they could go with one of the very reliable but very loud and cool-sounding Detroit diesel engines that General Motors offered at the time, or... Often in many applications, they could pick a different engine from, say, Caterpillar as an example. I wonder, though, if the Toro Flow diesel and the way that it was developed gave General Motors some confidence that it could develop a four-stroke diesel, at least in some way, using the same tooling as the gas engines. And perhaps this is what caused General Motors engineers to have some confidence that they could turn or at least use similar tooling for the Oldsmobile 350 cubic inch gas V8 as the 350 cubic inch diesel. That was also a four-stroke diesel, and obviously it didn't pan out very well. In fact, 
that diesel, the Olds 350, and its various siblings, the 4.3 liter V8 diesel and the subsequent 4.3 liter V6 Oldsmobile diesel, turned American consumers off from diesel engines for a long time for various reasons, most often, at least on the early ones, because of, yes again, head gasket issues and injection pump issues, interestingly enough. Some people may wonder why the various GM divisions like GMC or Oldsmobile didn't consult Detroit Diesel at the time for their expertise on diesels. And the simple reason was that Detroit Diesel had never produced a four-stroke diesel during this time period. So in producing a four-stroke diesel, like what I just talked about, it was very, very different from what Detroit Diesel was producing. And I doubt, frankly, that Detroit Diesel had really any lessons learned that they could share with the other General Motors divisions. In fact, when Detroit Diesel introduced its own four-stroke diesel, the 6.2 that they effectively developed, it had a number of issues as well. No surprise. Let's now close out this video with the sights and sounds, but not the smell, of a 478 cubic inch Toro Flow diesel starting up running and revving. Enjoy.